Hello everyone, I welcome you all to this INICT November 2024 recall physiology questions with me Dr. Abhirami, your subject matter expert for physiology. First of all, how were the physiology questions? Most of them were direct questions, not much of uh, clinically uh, twisted questions and all. Most of them were direct questions and also I think easy to moderate type of questions and we are so happy that we had a hundred percent strike rate in physiology from our Manipal Medes app where I have discussed all these questions and concepts in our videos as well as in the question part. So with that happiness let's move on to the first question. The first question was about two point discrimination and some students said it was specifically mentioned as static and some students said it was a Braille type of reading related question. So anyways, both are same. Answer would be the same. Two point static discrimination and Braille type of reading is mainly by which of the following mechanoceptors? So the answer to this would be Merkel's disc. We have discussed this in our physiology videos where uh, in the chapter of sensory receptors, particularly at this moment, I told you that Merkel receptors are responsible for the crude touch. What is crude touch? Points, edges, corners, elevations, ridges, all this is crude touch. And this crude touch is specifically sensed by the Merkel receptor. What is Braille type of reading? The, uh, the type of reading book for blind people. Have you seen that? The book will have some points, edges and corners. These people read by touching those points and corners, which is nothing but your crude touch. And also, two-point discrimination, uh, specifically static discrimination. Static means slowly adapting type of receptors are called static. The other one is rapid. So anyway, the answer would be same. Static type of receptors or Braille type of reading belonging to crude touch. For both, the answer would be Merkel disc. So the answer is Merkel disc. Question number two. Which curve shows oxygen hemoglobin dissociation of stored blood yes this is a very simple question and we have already discussed this in our uh, manipal medes app physiology videos where particularly at this moment i told you about the stored blood the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve the abnormalities in the curve could be right shift of the curve or a left shift of the curve when would you have right shift of the curve R for right shift, R for release of oxygen to tissues. Whenever there is a need to release oxygen to tissue, the curve shifts to the right side. In conditions like hypoxia or increase in H+, increase in CO2, increase in temperatures, increase in 2-3 BPG, exercise, all this causes a right shift. Left shift of the curve. That is what you see as red curve in this diagram. When will you see left shift of the curve? Left means tissues are left without oxygen. If tissues are left without oxygen, then where is all the oxygen? It is with hemoglobin itself. Hemoglobin is holding all the oxygen. It is not releasing the oxygen to the tissue. That's why the tissue is left without oxygen. So oxygen, hemoglobin, affinity is more in left shift. What are the other causes for left shift? Decrease in H+, decrease in CO2, decrease in temperature, decrease in 2-3 BPG, and stored blood when you store blood in blood banks blood is stored at low temperatures so that is a decrease in temperature if uh, we placed in the refrigerator and the other one is when you store blood we add certain agents to preserve the blood so those agents can decrease your 2-3 bpg levels so anyways stored blood will cause a left shift of the curve either because of the low temperature or because of decrease in 2-3 bpg levels there is a left shift of the curve so the question for this i think four curves were given and uh, you have to identify a b c or d so if a is identified as left shift of the curve and C is identified as right shift of the curve and curve B is a normal curve. Then the answer would be left shift of the curve. So whichever is the left shift of the curve, that would be the answer. So in this image, A shows left shift of the curve. So in your question, whichever is the left shift of the curve, that would be the more appropriate answer. This is a very, very important topic, oxygen hemoglobin curve. Repeatedly questions are asked from this curve. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री दिस इज द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ अ सार्कोमियर वेयर वी वेर आस्ट टू आइडेंटिफाई ए बैंड हेड जोन आई बैंड एंड जेड लाइन एंड आई एम सो हैप्पी दैट दिस क्वेश्चन ऑल्सो इन डिटेल वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इन आर फिजियोलॉजी वीडियोज वेर आई शोड यू द इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोपिक स्ट्रक्चर एंड द डिफरेंट डार्क एंड लाइट बैंड इन द सार्कोमियर सो एज यू लुक इन टू दिस डायग्राम द ब्लैक लाइन्स यू सी दे आर जेड लाइन्स एंड इन द सेंटर द होल ऑफ दिस मायूसिन इज अ थिक फिलमेंट सो दैट इज ए बैंड दैट गिवज यू अ डार्क बैंड ए बैंड in the center of this a band there is a zone where there is no overlap of actin if there is no overlap of actin this would be comparatively lighter and that we call it as the h zone in the center of the h zone there is a line which we call it as the m line the lighter bands belong to the actin filament thin filament so wherever there is actin it is the lightest band i band because actin is a thin filament it is the lightest band so moving over to the question let me mark all this in the question you can see the two z lines here the black lines are the z lines and this is the structure of a sarcomere in the center the dark band indicates a band in the center of the dark band a comparatively lighter zone that is your h zone in the center of the h zone there is a line the m line this is the m line and the lightest bands where you have only actin which appears lightest here so this is the a band sorry the lightest band the i band so this is how we mark this diagram we understand this diagram so i think the options were confusingly with a b c d so anyway if you know this diagram you know what is dark band and light band you can easily mark the parts over to question number 4 which of the following transport mechanism does not involve atp few students are saying it was uh, which of the following involves atp and some students said which of the following uh, does not involve atp but whatever the concept is the same all the first three options they are a type of passive transport diffusion parasellular diffusion and facilitated diffusion are passive type of transports for passive type of transport no energy is required atp is not required for active type of transport for active transport this requires energy and if this energy comes from breaking down of atp you call it as primary active transport so all atpas are example for primary active transport if this energy comes from sodium sglt sodium glucose co transporter or nis sodium iodide symporter or any type of transport where a substance is transported along with sodium that is called secondary active transport by any means you see energy will be utilized in active type of transport only atp specifically broken in primary active transport so the if the question is this which of the following mechanism does not involve atp then the answer would be a b and c if the question was which involves atp then you can go for active transport but the concept is same and i'm so happy that uh, particularly at this moment in our uh, manipal medes app physiology videos i have told you about this atp breaking down atp is is a primary active transport so all of these concepts we have already discussed in our videos and i'm so happy for that those who have watched the videos definitely you would have got all the questions right question number 5 match the following receptors to hormones and this question i think already it is all correctly matched only nuclear receptors nuclear receptor yes levothyroxine thyroid hormones can penetrate the cell membrane and they can go and bind to the nucleus so this is nuclear receptor thyroxine is right ligand gated ion channels acetylcholine what is a ligand gated channel when a chemical substance binds and the channel is opening that is a ligand gated ion channel yes acetylcholine channels the nicotinic receptors they are ligand gated ion channels correct tyrosine kinase pathway for insulin yes you remember this kinase means 
growth factor so all growth factors act through tyrosine kinase pathway insulin like growth factor and also insulin acts through tyrosine kinase pathway that is also right jack stat pathway jack stat is janus kinase pathway cytokine receptors act through jack stat pathway and growth hormone is the one which acts through cytokine receptor the jack stat pathway so that is also right so already they are correctly matched answer is uh, 1a 2b 3c and 4d and i'm so happy that we had a clear discussion of nuclear receptors and cell membrane receptors already in our physiology videos particularly at this moment where i told you about the thyroid receptors and we had also discussed about the kinase and insulin and also the cytokine receptors and growth hormone question number six which of the following causes decrease in gfr this is again a very important topic repeatedly questions are asked from this what is the answer to this so this is what we had discussed in gfr i've told you about gfr directly proportional to net filtration pressure so you remove this proportionality and make it as an equal to sign gfr is equal to kf into net filtration pressure kf is the ultra filtration coefficient here so obviously gfr is equal to kf into net filtration pressure so any increase in kf will increase gfr any decrease in kf would decrease the gfr so that's clear about the kf value the other values the other uh, starlings forces if this is the glomerulus and this is the tubule if there is any hydrostatic pressure in the glomerulus hydrostatic pressures are yes pushing forces they would push the filtration into the tubule so pgc hydrostatic pressure in the glomerular capillary would push the filtration into the tubule thereby increasing gfr what about pi gc pi gc is oncotic pressure in the glomerular capillary which will pull the filtration into the glomerulus thereby decreasing gfr so this would decrease gfr what about the other forces acting on the tubular side we have pi t and p g c sorry and p t on the tubule pi t oncotic pressure on the tubule oncotic pressures are pulling forces so this would pull the filtration into the tubule thereby increasing gfr and what about pt pushing forces this would push the filtration from the tubule into the glomerulus opposite direction again it would decrease the gfr so we see that pi gc and pt are forces which would decrease gfr and pgc and pi t are forces which would increase gfr this is a question based on starling's forces over to the question which of the following decreases gfr yes decrease in the glomerular coefficient kf kf is directly related to gfr so decrease in kf will decrease the gfr all other forces would increase the gfr this is a very important topic question number 7 which of the following manifestations is not associated with decompression sickness what is decompression sickness deep sea divers and scuba divers coal mine workers when they go deep into the sea as you go deeper and deeper atmospheric pressure increases and when you come up to the sea level from high pressure to low pressure if you ascend very rapidly all these gases will form bubbles and these bubbles go and block different parts of the body and there is a tendency to block uh, your um, heart the brain and also the lung thereby resulting in mi or stroke or pulmonary embolism so all this is related to coagulopathies so that can happen at uh, more than 3 atmosphere pressure even hearing loss and visual loss can happen so that may or may not happen but hemodilution what is hemodilution dilution of blood that has nothing to do with decompression sickness it is about gases forming bubbles and hemodilution can never occur at decompression sickness so which is not a manifestation yes hemodilution over to question number 8 which of the following contributes to latent period in single muscle twitch 
what is latent period the point where you apply the stimulus and till the point where the contraction is happening that is called the latent period so what is all happening to the during this latent period there is excitation contraction coupling yes opening of sodium channels yes transmission of impulses from the site of stimulus to the neuromuscular junction yes all this is taking place this is what is happening during the latent period pumping of uh, calcium back into the sr this is related to relaxation of the muscle when sr releases calcium the muscle will contract if the sr is taking back this calcium then it would relax so this is a mechanism for relaxation not for latent period during the latent period a b and c are happening it is not d i think there was a question on gastrectomy from what uh, what students said uh, there was a clinical question based on a patient after gastrectomy related to neural involvement numbness and decreased sensations so if that was a question uh, and few other vitamins were given so more likely this would match with vitamin b12 deficiency if b12 deficiency was there in the option that would be the more appropriate answer because b12 absorption stomach plays a role in b12 absorption an intrinsic factor of castle pr produced by the parietal cell also plays a role in uh, b12 absorption so after gastrectomy b12 absorption would be affected and b12 is related to um, myelination of your sensory neurons so in b12 deficiency there is neural involvement with decreased sensations and numbness so more appropriate answer would be b12 deficiency 10th question peripheral chemoreceptor is sensitive to what are the peripheral chemoreceptors the carotid body and the aortic body they are located on the carotid artery and the arch of aorta they are most sensitive to fall in the partial pressure of oxygen which is called hypoxia because they have glomus cells in them and these glomus cells have hypoxia sensitive potassium channels and these hypoxia sensitive potassium channels are the one which are sensing this hypoxia and therefore you have the chemoreceptors acting so they are most sensitive to hypoxia i'm not sure about the other options so some students said hypercapnia and alkalosis and all were there but anyways uh, peripheral chemoreceptors are most sensitive to fall in the partial pressure of oxygen only even though they can sense co2 and h plus they are most sensitive to oxygen only so if hypoxia is there it is definitely hypoxia yes you are much much more stronger than you think never underestimate yourself and looking at these questions and answers also don't have lots of deviation about the right answers and the wrong answers that doesn't matter and um, uh, wishing you all uh, the very best uh, for those who have made your best possible attempts for preparation in this exam so i wish all of you get pgc of your choice and wishing you all a beautiful life ahead so thank you so much uh, for watching this video and hope after this uh, you'll be happy to subscribe to our app manipal medis where we have all 19 subjects uh, completely reviewed videos by expert faculty and the speciality is that we have a vast range of question bank which is exclusively prepared by the faculty themselves and not by any students or any other person so the faculty is taking you classes and the faculty will also be guiding you through the mcq bank thank you so much